Our God is good to us. Amen. Turn this up. I can't hear myself. There we go. That's better. Amen. Praise God. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Our God is good to us, and we are looking forward to what God is going to do in our hearts and our lives. Remember service tonight at 6.30 p.m. Come praying, come believing, see what God has in store for us. Amen? Amen. And remember Bible study Tuesday night, right next door, 7.30, as we finish, hopefully this week, the book of Jude. Amen? It's taken us three weeks to do 25 verses, but God, God is good to us. Amen? Amen? At this time, we're going to receive the Sunday morning tithe and the Sunday morning worship offering. And just so you know where the tithe and the offering, what we use it for, we are strictly a, a faith-based group of people, amen? And how we operate here is by all of us, I pay my tithe, I give in offerings, and uh, by all of us doing what we're supposed to do before the Lord so that we can keep the lights on, amen. the air conditioning on, yes, sir. amen, the maintenance, the payments, the insurance, the mortgage, and uh, when you come to the servicemen's home and, and there's food there and activities over there, this is where the finances go to, just so you know. All right, so you come for dinner. Um, I don't know if any of you have been grocery shopping lately, but nothing's getting cheaper, yeah. right? right? Nothing is cheaper. So when we, we have you over for dinner, now maybe you you don't know what it's like to feed 15 or 20, 14 people. It's not free. Right. It's not free. So this is where your offerings and tithe go to to support the ministry here, all right? Yeah. And so you give us the Lord. Pay your tithe. Give to God. Tithe is a tenth of our gross income, which I have done since I got saved. And I don't regret doing that because the Bible tells us to do this. I give an offerings. The Lord yeah. blesses us for that. And so this, in case you're wondering where the finances go to, to support the work here. We don't receive finances from anywhere except in these offering bags. Amen? What people give. And so you give us unto the Lord. And may God bless you abundantly. Amen? Amen. Brother Ron, sir, please pray. Ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give unto you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the means to give to you. We ask you, Lord, to bless the gift and the giver according to your word. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for your giving. Now, maybe you didn't think about this, but maybe you did. As you were, as they were getting ready, as you're pulling into church this morning, how many noticed how nice the grass looked out there? Did anyone notice? All right, some hands went up. All right, so by saying that, I think it looks really nice too. We want to say thank you to Brother Jim. Brother Jim takes care of our yard, amen? That's a blessing. He cuts it, and it's, it takes, it's not a 10-minute job because you got all the grass over here, and down this way, and around over there, and he's out there in the heat, and he does it every week, and it looks nice. Yeah. It looks nice. Amen? And so people do notice, right? I notice. The Lord notices, right? But people do notice, and I, I think that's great. I want to say thank you. We appreciate that. And it does not, the Bible talks about how that Lord knows, right? He does not forget our labors of love. And we appreciate Jim doing this for the Lord, for us. And we just want to say thank you. It looks great. It looks wonderful. And the rest of you should shout and rejoice too because you don't have to do it. Amen. I know I'm rejoicing. All right. So but I just want to say thank you. It looks wonderful. It looks great. And people do notice. And we just want to say thank you for that. Amen. God bless you. songs feel more than free to stand up and sing it with them, amen? If you know it. And if you don't know it, still stand and sing it
talk to us and uh, we'll see what we got going on Maybe we can do something and I printed out some things that we got going on here in town and fireworks and concerts and different things that we can partake in and have a good time with. Amen? Amen. We just don't want you to be alone on the 4th of July weekend. Good. Praise God. Good. If you have your Bibles that would like to or you can follow along on the screen John chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And I'd like to preach to you this morning for a little while on the title of a message, Jesus, the Son of Man. Reverend Palmer, sir, please pray. Father, we're grateful this morning to be in your house to hear your word, Lord. Continue, Lord, to move and bless the people 
this morning. Help us this morning to be attentive. Help us to be receptive, oh God, to all that you have for us. We ask you to be grant me, pray for the bread of life unto your people. We give you all the glory and praise in Christ's name. Amen. 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 You know, the Gospel of John serves as a wonderful gallery which displays to us the glory of Jesus. And as you know, here at NTCC, our goal and our desire is to lift up Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so we preached to you last week about Jesus, the Word of God, out of chapter 1. And we saw that John gave us there in chapter 1 the evidence of the deity of Jesus and proved him to be God as well as becoming a man for us. How many are glad that Jesus came for us? Amen? Amen. And Jesus was shown in all of its majesty in the place of the Godhead. Now in chapter 2, he gives us two snapshots from the life of Christ. In verses 1 through 11, we see Christ at a wedding. And then in verses 12 through 25, Jesus is shown at the house of worship. In the latter scene, we see that Christ, he exerted his authority as the Son of God to cleanse the filth from his Father's house. And you know what? Let me tell you something. God has not changed his mind. Amen? Amen. God's house is a holy house. Amen? It is to be reverenced that we serve a God who is a holy God. Praise the Lord. His house is still to be called a house of prayer, a house of praise, and a house of worship. I'm glad that we can praise a living God in the place of worship today. It's sad to say that many in our day have tried to make God's house a place of merchandise, a place of power, and a place of politics. I believe that Jesus still stands opposed to such practices. However, this morning, I really didn't come to preach about the scene at the temple, but rather I want to talk about the scene at the wedding. In this little snapshot here in the ministry of Christ, he is seen in all of his humanity. This scene pictures a Jesus who is concerned with, gets involved with, the problems, the situations of ordinary, everyday life. I'm glad that our God is concerned about every aspect of our life. Yes. About our problems. You know what? Every one of us in here have things to deal with. Yes, sir. We have situations in our life, but I'm glad that our God is concerned about these things. And so in this passage, we encounter a Christ who cares, who can, and who carries through with his own. And so I want to look at this for just a little while this morning. Jesus, the Son of Man. So first of all, we find that Christ's participation in the events of life. Let's look at verses 1 and 2. I already read it to you once. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. All right, so let's look at the circumstances. There was a wedding. Praise God for a wedding, right? Amen. Who's looking forward to a wedding? You're not going to raise your, you better raise your hand right now. All right, they're getting married here very soon. What day? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Man, your hand should have shot up in there like. Uh. Well, hers ain't going to be there, so. Who's excited for the wedding? They're like. Who's excited for a future, who's excited for a future wedding? It's tomorrow. He raised his hand. Good job. All right. So a wedding, it was really a huge social event of those days. And they said that the celebration could even last as long as a week. Now, we're not told who's getting married, but most likely it was someone who was close or someone who was a kinsman to Christ. Maybe a brother, a sister, a cousin. Now, I want to just insert here real quick like that. Jesus had brothers and sisters, half brothers and sisters, if you will, because Mary did not stay a virgin. All right, understand that. And we can say that it probably was, probably was somebody who was close to Christ and his family, and because we know that Mary is involved in the festivities. Now, notice something here. If the scene teaches us anything, it tells us that Jesus chose to participate in the common, a routine, and everyday event. I'm going to tell you right now that Jesus isn't just for Sunday. So many times people think that Jesus is just for Sunday. He's not just for Sunday. He's for every day of the week of our life. Amen? 
he's either Lord of all or he isn't Lord at all in your life. Christ desires and he deserves to be included in all areas of our life. And so the circumstances is the wedding. And then we see the call. Jesus is there by invitation. Somebody possessed the forethought and the thoughtfulness to call Jesus to this event. Listen, never be guilty of attempting to exclude Jesus from any area of your life. He has to be part of all of our lives. Amen? Amen. And so by the virtue of his sacrifice for us at Calvary, he deserves the inclusion in all that we are and all that we do. I want you to remember, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. He said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Listen, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Uh, you know what? In everything that we do, we ought to strive to do our very best to glorify our God who has saved us, who has delivered us, who has blessed us beyond measure. How many of them have blessed beyond measure? We want God in every part of our lives. Now, if we are truly his, and we have been born again, that means that he has access rights to everything. How can we say no to God when we've been bought with a price? We need to open up all areas of our life to God. And really, we need to come to a place where we need to stop holding back and give God access to everything. Amen. And so how people are today is they, they want to give God a little part, but they don't want to give God all of it. God wants access to everything. I've shared this before, how that you invite people to your house. You can come in the living room, but it's clean. But you don't want them in the rest of the house. Because it's a mess. Right. How many know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. All right? Sit here, but don't go any further. <laughs> well, in Christ, God wants access to everything because we want God to clean up everything in our life. Amen? Amen. Stop holding back in too many lives. Jesus is left standing outside looking in. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 tells us, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. You know what? Christ is there. He wants to come in. He's knocking at the door of your life. It's time to open up the door and say, Come on in, Jesus. I want you in my life. He's there, ready, standing with a solution to your problem. But you know what? Our God is a perfect gentleman. Yes, sir. He's waiting for your invitation. Yes, sir. So Christ was invited to this wedding. And you know what? He's waiting for you to invite him into your life. We have a choice. Yes. We are free moral agents, and we have a choice to do what we want to do. And Christ is not going to butt in. He deals with your heart. The Spirit deals with your heart, and he wants you to come to him. But really, the choice is yours. So why not make that happen today? Give your life to him. Be forgiven. Invite him into your life, and let God do something for you. Don't hold back, and let the windows of heaven open up upon you and be blessed beyond measure. Our God is that kind of God. The circumstances, the call. Now let's look at Christ's consideration. Notice that when he was called, Christ came. He's not like us. Yeah, if I don't have nothing better to do, I'll come. Right? He came. I like that. He came. In all the events of life, the child of God does not have to fear Jesus not coming to their aid. All we have to do is to call him. All we have to do is begin to pray and say, God, I need you right now. And I'm glad that our God is a prayer answering God. And he cares. And when we call, he'll answer and he'll move to meet our need. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be 
open. I'm glad. I'm glad that we have this prayer here and we can take it to God as a God. I'm going to seek after you. I'm going to knock and you're going to answer. You're going to come in and I know it's going to be all right. Yeah. Jeremiah 33 and 3. He says, call unto me and I'll put you on hold. No, sir. And you can listen to elevator, heavenly elevator music. No, that's not what it says. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I like that. I will show you great and mighty things. And we've got sometimes in our in our minds we, we can't comprehend this because we, we limit God by our own thinking. But I'm glad that we serve a supernatural God who is not limited by our thinking. Can someone say amen, right? Amen. There's an old song that says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear when we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We hold on to it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Not you, just me, right? We hold on to things. And then we begin to worry. And then we think, oh my goodness, what's going on? And you begin to grin in your hand. And what about this? And what about that? And what about this? Well, what about God? Amen. Amen? Yes. We hold on to these things. Why don't we let go? Take it to God in prayer. And we need to learn to turn to Jesus before you allow the cares and the problems of this life to consume you. And that's exactly what's going to happen. If we don't give it to God, it will consume you. Because your mind. Is hyperactive. Yes, sir. How many times you lay down at night to go to sleep? Your body's exhausted, but your mind is wide awake. Yes. All these things going on in your mind over and over and over and over and over and over. Just take it to God in prayer. Amen. Amen? Yes, sir. We need to learn to do this before we allow it to consume us. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Man, hallelujah, Jesus can and will take care of us if we allow him to do so. All right. We see his participation in the events of our life. You know what? He wants to participate in your life. When are you going to allow him to participate? Or are you just going to be a spectator? We don't want to be just spectators. We want the blessings of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And then we see Christ's power in the events of life. In cha chapter 2, verse 3 there in John, it says, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Right away we see a problem. They said they have no wine. Sometime during these festivities, they ran out of that wine. May not seem like much of a problem to us, maybe, but to the Jews, it could be ruinous. First of all, it was a matter of honor. The bridegroom was responsible for providing for adequate supplies. If something ran out before the party was concluded, it simply meant that he had a plan well and he had not provided for all of his guests. <coughs> it was a matter of honor. Excuse me. Secondly, to run out of wine would cause public embarrassment. It'd be embarrassing to the groom and his family. Therefore, this was a problem of considerable size to these people. You know, let me tell you something. Life doesn't always go as we plan it. You're not awake this morning, are you? Does your life always go as planned? I'm going to join the army, and I'm going to do this. You know that I've not seen it. Not not the second one. The second Top Gun movie. You saw the second Top Gun movie. Anybody? Is it good? Yeah. All right. So they said when it was first played back when it was like '84 or something like that. When was the first one? '85. Excuse me. I was a year off. All right. So they said that right after that there was a a rise in enlistment for people to join the Air Force and want to fly jets. So then I saw a meme on Facebook, and, and uh, 
<laughs> the guy was asking the recruiter, said, so, I don't know, does he fly, does Tom Cruise fly Hornets or what is he, whatever he flies, right? I'll just say Hornets, just for the sake of conversation. So I'll be able to fly Hornets like, like Tom Cruise or Maverick, whatever his name is. And the guy said, yes. Then it said one year later, he's in the mess hall cutting up potatoes. So <laughs> life doesn't always go as planned, amen? How many of you had a truthful recruiter? One. How many? <laughs> Never mind. I think mine was okay, I think. It's been a long time ago. But all I'm saying is life doesn't always go as you plan it, correct? Right. Problems will arise. Troubles will come our way. It's a common thing. Job chapter 14, verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Things come our way, don't they? And then John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We're going to have days that are not so good. Can I get a witness? Right. But guess what? Our worst day, our worst day, you know what? As a Christian, it's far better than our best day being a sinner on our way to hell. Right. It's good to know that when our problems come, our situations come, we can take it to Jesus. Amen? Those all around us, they may seem, it may seem as nothing. They may think our problems are no big deal. What's the problem? You know what the good thing is that Jesus, he understands our pain and he feels our need. And he knows. And that's the thing about it. You may not care what I'm going through, but you know what? I know that my Jesus does. Amen. And people look at you and they smile. You know, they try to be polite, which is a good thing to do. But you know what? Jesus is more than just smiles. He helps us with our problems. Amen? Amen. We also know a story when Christ and his disciples encountered a storm while in the boat. And a story when the disciples were alone in the storm and tossed ship. In both instances, they felt that Jesus was out of touch with their need. But both times they were wrong. Jesus knew their troubles and he felt their need. And so he began to move upon the problem and he made a difference for them. And you know what? There's good news right now in the service. God will do the same thing for you. You just got to call upon him. Why wait any longer? There's a problem. There's no warning. And then we see a procedure, verses 3 through 5. And they wanted wine. The mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. In this time of trouble, Mary shows us what we need to do when trouble arises in our lives. She gives us two steps that we should take in the troublesome times of life. Number one, we need to flee to Jesus. We got to get to Jesus. So when a problem arose, Mary took it to the Lord. That's exactly what we need to do. All right, so in the verse four, Jesus said, use that term, woman. So that sounds kind of harsh. Woman, what have I to do with thee? No, it wasn't, it wasn't cruel. It wasn't, it wasn't harsh. This actually was a polite and common form of address at that time. And Jesus is simply reminding Mary that he had a greater agenda fulfilled than hers for the rest of the wedding party. And so think about this. You go back to the book of Luke chapter 2. The Bible tells us that Jesus was subject unto them, talking about Mary and Joseph. Now he's reminding his mother that it's time for him to begin his to begin to fulfill his father's will. And so here we find this Mary is going to Christ. Let's look at it this way. Perhaps Mary is crying out for help as well. Think about Mary. For 30 years, she had been accused of being at best a mother of an Ill illegitimate child of a Roman soldier because of rape. At worst, she's been accused of being guilty of fornication or even adultery. 
It may be that Mary is asking Jesus to clear her name. Mary needed things just like the rest of us. To show them that he is who she has always known him to be. She knew who he was. And she knew what was going on. But everybody didn't buy into it. Just food for thought here. Maybe she was calling out for help as well. And whatever is on display here, the fact remains that when confronted with the problem, Mary turned to Jesus. What a wonderful, fantastic example for us to follow. We need to turn to Jesus. Amen. My goal is for every one of you and others to know Jesus in the reality, to go to heaven. That's my desire for you, and that's God's desire for you. I want you to be saved. I want you to know Jesus in the reality. You don't get saved by, through me. You get saved through Jesus. We are saved by grace. You call upon God, and God will save you. And so whatever's going on in your life, we need to turn to Jesus. Can someone say amen to that? Yeah. All right, so flee to Jesus, number two. Follow his commands. This is the only command that, Je that Mary ever issued in the whole Bible. For those who feel that Mary is to be reverenced and adored and worshipped and obeyed, well, this is an excellent, excellent advice. Just do as Jesus says. The lesson is clear. When problems arise and troubles toss our lives, the best thing that we can do is simply do what Jesus says to do. But you know what happens? You know what gets in the way? We do. Our thinking gets in the way. What does Jesus say to do? In Matthew 11, he says, come to him. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and 7, he said, cast your cares upon him. Romans 8, 28 tells us to trust him. Acts 16, 30, uh, 16, 31, believe on him for salvation. This is what Jesus tells us to do. Amen. We need to do, I need to do what Jesus says to do. There was a problem, a procedure, and now it's performance. John 2, 6 through 9. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. I like this. Jesus took the commonplace and he made it extraordinary. He changed the situation. You know what? I believe that he can change the situation if he is given the opportunity to do so. Amen. Will we not give Jesus the opportunity? First of all, it's kind of unconventional. Water to wine. Who would ever thought? You know what? Let me tell you something. Jesus doesn't always run on, run on our track. Right. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. He's not always running on our track. He will help you in your situation. He may not do it your way, but we must remember that God's ways are not the same as ours. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We may not always understand, but we still have to have faith in Christ. Because we want God to work the way that we want him to work. But God's going to do what he wants to do. The thing is, we surrender to him, we give our all to him, and it's in his hands. Amen? So it was unconventional, then it was uncommon. The governor of the feast was surprised at the quality of this new wine. It was an uncommon thing. Now realize, just because God did something one way back then does not mean that he'll do the same way now. God will do what is best. So, here we are, 21st century Christians. We're trying to squeeze God into our little box of what we want, of what we think God should be. God doesn't fit in a box. 
And we want to squeeze them into our schedules. We want to put them into our mold. That's backwards. We should be molded into his image. Amen? Amen. Conforming to his image. And you know what? You try to do that, put God into a box, it's not going to work. Amen? Amen. Let's do it God's way. Amen. And then it was unbelievable. The governor didn't know it, but the servants did. When you carry the water, you felt its weight, and God moves and changes it from ordinary common event into something that proves to be a blessing in your life. You just never get over it. The servants knew. what. You know what? I know what God has done in my life. I know what God has done for me. And you know what? There's not one of you in here who can take that away from me. Because I know, I know so many years ago, I was so filled in Hawaii. I knelt down and I gave my life to God. They didn't believe it could happen, but I got saved. And no one can take that away from me. You don't know what I was before I got saved. You have to say thank you, Jesus, to that. Nobody in this world may understand what you're going through, but Jesus does. Amen. So when he moves in your time of need, and he begins to bless, and he turns your darkness into day, and he lifts your burden, you know. You may even walk away from God at some time in your life, God forbid, but you cannot deny what God has done. Amen. And there are people that I know that have walked away from God. Hurts your heart. But you know what? They cannot deny. Well, they can say it, but deep down on the inside, they know. Yeah. And when God does something for us and he removes that sin, and the Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from what? All sin. And we know that God has done that for us. It causes us to rejoice. Do not ever allow anyone to take that away from you. Amen? Amen. To everyone else, it was just wine. But to those who knew the truth, it was a miracle. How many need a miracle in your life this morning? Amen. All right, so the participation in the events of life, Christ's power in the events of life, and then lastly, Christ's provisions in the events of life. John chapter 2, 10 and 11. And he saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and the disciples believed on him. All right, so first of all, Christ provided that which pertained to the flesh, which was the wine. He gave them just what they needed in their immediate circumstances. God will do the same thing for us. Sometimes we have a need, like right now, right? Yes, sir. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. The key word in that verse is all. My God shall supply what? All. Now, as we begin to do a careful study in the Greek of this word, it really means all. Really, it does. You look at it, it really means that. He will meet your need. And when you put God to the test, the problem is that people, they don't believe the Bible, they don't believe God. Put God to the test. He'll meet you every need, every time. Amen. All right, so he pertained to that which is the flesh. Then he pertained, he provided that which pertained to the faith. Verse 11 said his disciples believed on him. Notice one thing, your faith in Jesus is never misplaced. Right. If you display that mustard seed faith in your hour of trial, Jesus will enter into that need and move your mountain. Yes. God will never, ever, ever fail his children. Yes. He knows he will not fail you. He will provide which pertains to our faith. And because of all this, the disciples believed on him. My question is, do you believe on him this morning? Yes. And then he, pro he provided that which pertained to the future. Verse 11 again, it says, manifested his glory. When you see Jesus come through the hour of your crisis, it'll do something for you. It'll strengthen your faith, give you hope for tomorrow. And when you see Jesus work in our lives and the lives of others, 
we begin to see what he can do. And the result of that is that our faith will be increased. We know God took care of me here, and I see God took care of this. God can take care of me tomorrow. Yes, amen. God can take care of me next week. Wherever that I'm at, God will take care of me. Yes, Our God is a dependable God. Amen? amen? Really what I want you to take home from this message is this. That Jesus is tied to the events of your life. Come to the instruments, please. He's just not some remote supernatural being who is totally removed from our need. He cares about the smallest details of your life. But here he is today waiting for you to call him into our lives, to let him be a part. So my question is, what is your need today? Salvation? God can save you. If you have a burden that's heavy, God can take care of it. If you have a habit that's destroying you, let God help you. A bad situation, some circumstances that you feel are beyond your control, let Jesus help you. Do as Mary did in our Bible reading. Bring it to a Lord who cares. Bring it to Jesus the Son of Man. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord this morning, 